The sad truth is that most Kenyans do not realize how serious the maize story is for ordinary Kenyans. And I'm not talking about ordinary Kenyans only in the Rift Valley. I'm talking about ordinary Kenyans countrywide. Now you'll have to bear with me. I know that maize is boring. Nobody wants to discuss maize. Very few Kenyans would want to go into the maize business. It's a boring business. Yeah, it does not make for very good bar talk. Yeah, because you're sitting with your friends somewhere at a night spot. Yeah, or a drinking hall as Kenyans call them. And uh, your friends introduce you to other new friends. Yeah, and always the first question is, what do you do? Yeah, so saying, oh, I sell maize is not uh, very impressive, is it? <laughs> or I'm a maize farmer. Yeah, anyway, the reason I've made this recording is to try and give you an inside look into the kind of damage these maize scandals keep on doing to us as a nation and as a country. And as usual, I'll keep it very interesting by telling you a story, a true story that involves myself and my late political lecturer. Now, when my political lecturer retired from the police force, he actually forced, forced retirement because he could not toe the line of corruption, okay, he was just too principled, indeed and realistically principled, if I can just say the truth, yeah, he decided to go into his uh, lifelong passion, which was farming. Now, my political lecturer did not hail from the Rift Valley, yeah, where there are vast uh, tracts of very fertile land. No way. He, of course, hailed from Ukambani, an area which everybody uh, classifies as very arid. Yeah, you can hardly plant anything there. Now, that is not 100% true, but that's a story for another day. And so, in delving into farming, his main speciality, in fact, the only thing he planted, was maize. Now, over the years, he had invested in very many small tracts of land. Yeah. And uh, these tracts of land were designed only for farming. And there were so many things that uh, if you looked at, you'd just say his plan was impossible. Yeah. Because, first of all, the land was not uh, flat. Yeah. It was very hilly. Uh, a tractor could not uh, access it. No way. And then it was not fertile. Okay. But of course he found solutions to those problems. Yeah, he used uh, labor. Yeah, local labor. Everything he did, he did manually. Just bear with me. There's a very good reason I'm telling you this story. Now his plan was very simple. Okay. He had uh, a goal of harvesting a thousand bags of maize. Just one thousand. Now, at that time, the fixed price of maize was 1,000 shillings a bag. Now, although he had other investments in real estate uh, in various places, uh, real estate that was valued at uh, quite a lot of money, he kept on saying that in his whole life, he had never handled a million shillings in revenue at one go. Yeah. So what his goal was, was to do his farming and in one season, end up with 1 million shillings in his pocket. Now, in those days, the 80s and the 90s, a million bob was a lot of money. Hence, his calculation of 1,000 bags. 1,000 bags multiplied by 1,000 shillings per bag is a million bob. Now, unfortunately, that is a goal he never attained. Yeah, he never actually reached that goal. And it is not because he didn't work hard. It is not because he didn't come up with 1,000 bags. But it's because of the Kenya as we know it today. Now, in those early days, it was very difficult for him to attain 1,000 bags. So he'd end up with something like 300 bags, 600 bags of maize. And he would very carefully monitor the market to see what the prices were. Now, inevitably, there are always uh, maize shortages in the country. It always happens periodically. Okay? And when there's a shortage, the price shoots up. And so his calculation was still uh, working. Yeah, fewer bags of maize, but with a higher price, and did attain his goal of a million shillings in one harvest season. Now, I need to give you some important piece of information. In Ukambani, there are two maize seasons. You can harvest twice in a year. In fact, the area where uh, it comes from, there are two rain seasons. And the second rains, uh, which are normally very short, and for some people not enough, are more than enough in that particular area. So what that meant, if we harvested 300 bags, 
ya uh, early in the year you would harvest another 300 bags towards the end of the year total 600 bags but always something went wrong usually what would happen and this when i noticed that there's a lot of maize politics in kenya and that's when i noticed that uh, the maize business ni kubwa and this has been happening in kenya from <laughs> from as long as anybody can remember so what usually happens the way the scam goes every time the maize uh, stocks go low in the country yeah maybe the previous uh, season was not very good what would happen is that the country imports maize and there are these very corrupt people what they normally do is they wait for the government to announce that they're going to import maize indeed what they do they import the maize even before the government has declared that the country will import maize so that by the time the announcement is made the maize is already in the high seas in fact in very many cases has even already docked in mombasa but has not been cleared and so when the imported maize came in a few people made a lot of money by selling this maize to the national cereals and produce board imported maize and the other thing it did very important is that uh, it uh, kept the prices low now i can hear you saying this is a good thing for the mwananchi that the price of maize remains low yeah but uh, look at it from another point of view it frustrates those farmers who grow maize yeah because being entrepreneurs they deserve a chance to make money but who ends up making the money just a few corrupt people closely linked to the government who import the maize they're not even farmers yeah and they make a killing and of course as we have seen in recent days these uh, guys are paid long before the other farmers who have arrears for many years are paid yeah so you have a real farmer he has not been paid for two three years or is owed millions by the national cereals and produce board yeah but uh, some entrepreneur yeah evil entrepreneur not really an entrepreneur a thief comes in imports maize sells to the cereal board uses the government contacts the check is out in uh, like lightning and they make their money at the expense of our local farmers now when this is done over a long period of time many years decades and decades what do you think the impact is on maize farming why should anybody be surprised that kenya a very fertile country is not self-sufficient in food and of course you know our main, our main uh, food is maize ugali yeah and we are not self-sufficient in maize when you grasp this story i've just told you you'll understand why actually the simple solution to protecting uh, consumers from high ugali prices and at the same time ensuring that farmers keep on planting maize so that we're self-sufficient is simply to provide subsidies when there's a shortage so you don't interfere with the market prices but what you do when there's a shortage and the prices climb high the government pays the difference to genuine farmers not uh, thieves masquerading as farmers now of course my late political lecturer was lucky he had other investments he did not rely on uh, maize farming that was just a hobby but picture an ordinary kenyan who has got no other source of income except their land okay and uh, you picture all those decades of frustration picture even a new generation taking over yeah from their parents who faced the same frustrations would they plant maize now this is a perfect example of how deliberate government policy yeah which makes way for corruption messes up a country big time so that a country at the end of the day is not able to feed itself now anybody will tell you if you cannot do something as basic as feed yourself you're in trouble as an individual you're in serious trouble much more so a country a country that cannot feed itself is in very very serious trouble how will you make any other meaningful development if first and foremost you cannot feed your people and the saddest part of it is as a country you cannot feed your people not because your farmers are lazy not because your farmers don't have the knowledge not because your farmers do not work in hard uh, work hard enough it's all because of corruption folks that's how serious this may story is now i know my political lecturer is standing in his grave now as we discuss this because he died still trying very hard to make some serious cash from maize farming but from my story and from this scandal which has broken out recently you can tell that that is impossible yeah the system is against you it's not possible to make serious money from maize farming all because of corruption 
there are some very evil Kenyans who always wait to cash in and cash in in a very bad and unfair way every time the inevitable maize shortages hit our country. And that is very, very sad. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha. Thank you.